Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus was headed to Jerusalem for his crucifixion. Enormous crowds were following him. They wanted to be like him. They wanted to be disciples of Jesus, followers of Jesus. But all of a sudden, Jesus stopped dead in his tracks, turned around, and said to this enormous crowd, unless you hate your father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, even your own life, you cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Before they got any closer to Jerusalem, any closer to the cross, Jesus wanted his followers to sit down and realize what it meant to truly become a Christian, a true follower of Jesus. There was once an Ethiopian man who was born into a Muslim family. And one day he heard the gospel from the Ethiopian Lutheran church and became a Christian. He wanted to follow Jesus, but the cost to him was heavy. You see, his mother and father not only disproved, they wouldn't have it. And the man's cousins were actually violent with him, grabbing his shirt collar and shaking him as if they could knock the Holy Spirit right out of this man. But this Ethiopian Lutheran man was faithful. He was following Jesus. The cost? His mother and father, brothers and sisters, cousins and relatives. There was once an American woman who looked like she had it all. Her life looked put together. She worked hard, but she played even harder. But over the many years of satisfying every single one of her whims and gratifying any pleasure she could put her hands on, she started to feel empty. From the outside, everything looked great. But on the inside, she just felt hollow. One day she heard the gospel, how Jesus died on a cross and invited his followers to also give up their old lives and find a new life in him. The woman was Intrigued by Jesus' invitation, give up her old empty life and live a new life in Jesus. The cost, just like Jesus said, bear your own cross, die, and come after me. Be my disciple. In the country of Norway, there's a group called the Norwegian Lutheran Mission Society. And this group has been around a long time and they do one thing. They support missions around the world. And are they ever serious about supporting missions? This group may hear that there is need for a school in a country like Madagascar. And Madagascar has over 3 million Lutherans. More Lutherans than are in the LCMS. And many of these Lutherans live in very remote areas. In order to build a school, members of the Norwegian Lutheran Mission Society have been known to remortgage their own homes. And then they will pull their money together and build the school. Members of this mission society take Christ's call very seriously when he says, renounce all that you have if you want to be my disciple. The cost? A new mortgage on their house. But the payoff is so much greater. 
an Ethiopian man, a woman who looked like she had it all, a Lutheran mission society in Norway. Even though they are all from different parts of the world, they all did one thing in common. They took Jesus' words seriously about what it meant to become a disciple, a follower. We're not so different from all of them, are we? <clears throat> we have also been called to be disciples of Jesus, to follow him. That Ethiopian man, born into a Muslim family, faced suffering for wanting to be a Christian. We don't have to be an Ethiopian man to go through this. I bet all of us have family members who are either not in the church, have left the church, or who live in ways that are not faithful to Christ. So which family is going to impact you more? The family you were born into or the family you were reborn into? Which family are we going to follow more, listen to more? Which family will influence you more? I know it can be hard. It can be hard for all of us. That's why Jesus prepared us by saying, Unless you hate your father and mother and wife and children, and brothers and sisters, you cannot be my disciple. That's a hard thing to do, isn't it? Blood is blood. Those ties run deep. But hasn't Jesus also produced another family for you with a greater blood than the blood of man? By Jesus' blood. Shed on the cross, he has created for you a family more numerous than all the stars in the sky, if you could even count them. Because your family in the church is made up of all of God's redeemed children by Christ's blood they were bought. You've been given an eternal family, an everlasting family, a heavenly family. The American woman I mentioned earlier looked all put together on the outside. But after pursuing every, every pleasure life could offer, she never really felt satisfied. She never felt whole. Something was missing. In this country in particular, Many pleasures in this life call out to us, and we spend many hours in a day following those pleasures. We are bombarded with pleasures of ever-changing technologies that tickle our fancy. We are lured with all kinds of pleasures to fill our mouths and our bellies, and we are tempted with pleasures from a hypersexual pop culture. How does following Jesus fit in with all these pleasures? Some try to have it both. But Jesus doesn't like to share you. He wants you all to himself. This is why Jesus said, Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. When Jesus called you to follow him, he called you to follow him to a cross. And Jesus did that so your sinful nature could be, could be put to death with him. You now are free. You don't have to listen to your sinful natures anymore. When it calls out to you, you don't have to follow you're free now. Not free to do whatever you want. You've been set free so you can do whatever God wants. And that is true freedom. 
I'll be the first to admit what some members of the Norwegian Lutheran Mission Society do for missions may seem a bit drastic when you think about it. Some of them actually refinance their homes to do missions. It sounds drastic, doesn't it? But is it really? Jesus just spoke about us losing our lives to follow him. What's a house compared to our life? That's why Jesus says, whoever does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Our possessions can have a funny hold over our lives, can't they? We get upset when our phones are damaged, sad when our cars get scratched. Our possessions can lead us around and we follow them right along. But as a disciple, a follower of Jesus, we're invited to think of our possessions differently. Our possessions are not really our possessions. They're God's possessions. Our phone is not our phone. It's God's phone. Our car is not really our car. It's God's car. Our house is not our house. It is God's house. Because all that we have came to us from God and was given to us by God. And all that we have will one day return back to God when we die. That should be freeing for us as disciples of Jesus to know that our hearts don't have to follow our possessions around every day. Maybe that's why members of that mission society could part so easily with their possessions even their homes. They realized that stuff never really belonged to them in the first place. It was just entrusted to them for a while by God. We are Jesus' disciples, aren't we? It's challenging to follow Jesus, isn't it? You bet. Especially challenging with what Jesus said today. But just look at the payoff. Does Jesus just ask everything from you and give you nothing in return? Of course not. Always remember, when it comes to family, it was Jesus who went to the cross and by his blood redeemed a whole new people to become your mother's and fathers, your sisters and brothers, your children. You are part of the church, an eternal family stretching all the way back to creation itself. Always remember, when it comes to our lives, it was Jesus who went to the cross and through his death now invites all of us to have a part of us put to death along with him our sinful nature. You don't have to be a slave to your sinful nature anymore. You are free from that old Adam which has been crucified with Jesus. And always remember, when it comes to our possessions, that it was Jesus who went to the cross and there he himself was stripped naked and hung in shame for all the world to see. On that cross, Jesus had no possessions, not even a meager scrap of cloth to cover his nakedness. Jesus doesn't ask you to go through what he did, but he does want you to consider yourself naked as well penniless, owning nothing yourself, regarding every single one of your possessions as actually being 
Christ's possessions. We are merely stewards of everything God owns. We have been entrusted by God to use those gifts for the betterment of His church and for one another. Whether it is our family, our lives, or our possessions, everything belongs to Christ. And thankfully, everything one day will return back to Christ. Amen. And now may the peace of our God, which surpasses our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand as our worship continues as we confess the Christian faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed.